May it please the court. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, good morning. The video evidence I think will be very helpful and meaningful to you because you can see it for yourself without lawyer talk, lawyer spin, lawyer anything. You can see it for yourself. Please, please, I can't breathe. Please, man. Please, man. Please, man. Please, man. I'm about to die to save you. Oh my God! What did he say? He said, I'm about to die. While watching the George Floyd trial, I noticed the differences and the importance of footage. This corner? When Stefan was murdered, we only had the officer's footage. We only had their point of view. Hey! Show me your hands! You know, when my son was killed, being on the platform, there was several bystanders that filmed, and had it not been for the cameras, we wouldn't even be here today because they would have probably said it was justified. Bro, with your feet on his neck, man, you can always see your knee on his neck. Yeah. yeah. A little bit more, right here. I don't watch the footage of my dad's incident because it's torture. You see the officers giving a tour of blows to his body. Yes, to his arms, to his torso, to his legs. Here it is 30 years later. Nothing has changed. Now, who are you going to believe? The defendants or your own eyes? I am watching the George Floyd case with my best friend Tiffany at her home. Oh my gosh. Wow. And he's still on his neck. Today was the first time I watched the entire video of George Floyd, and it definitely made me think about my dad begging for his life, screaming. His daughter was the same age I was when my dad was beaten. My name is Laura Danae King. I'm the middle child of Rodney Glenn King. The world saw the videotape. We thought the video showed excessive force and unnecessary force. With that videotape, if they had two eyes and they weren't blind, you could see that it was excessive force. The defense tried to dilute the impact of the tape by dissecting it frame by frame in an effort to show that King was a threat to the officers. He kind of gave out like a bear-like yell, like a wounded animal. If he had grabbed my officer, it would have been a death grip. If he had grabbed the weapon, he would have had numerous targets, sir. He didn't grab anybody during these events, did he? No, sir, he did not. He couldn't walk. He had 50 broken bones. His skull was permanently fractured. He had permanent brain damage. My dad was never the same after that, right. you know? And right. everybody just considered him to be normal. Like, I think if that happened to anybody, they wouldn't be normal ever again. Wow. This doesn't just affect the person it happened to. It also affects all those people who are out there watching it. They're all affected. Yeah, forever. forever. Yeah. I was desperate to help. I was just kind of emotional. And I went to the African American. I was standing there in the curb, and I was just like, like, they're not going to help him. Oh, my. This man, he witnessed another African American man getting his life taken. The nine year old speaker on the trial. Good morning, Judea. Good morning. Which one is you? Just so happened to be walking down the street. She will never forget that for the rest of her life. You ultimately ended up posting your video to social media, right? Correct. And it went viral? Correct. Changed your life, right? The girl who filmed George Floyd, the fact that there was nothing she can do to save his life. It's been nights. I stayed up apologizing and, and apologizing to George Floyd for not doing more. That's something that will haunt her. Like George Holiday, who captured my dad's video. Without George Holiday, these four officers might not be on trial. He just wanted to test this new camera he had. Like, oh, let me test. He stood there shaking, terrified. 
woman, and he still suffers to this day because that was the right thing to do. Now what could he have done to deserve that? If I was to see George Floyd's daughter today, I wish it was something I can say, but it's not easy. It's not easy at all because I'm sure she's watched that videotape and that's something that carries in your mental every, every day, just like my dad's videotape. For the jury, a difficult decision ahead, knowing that to acquit the four officers could ignite this city. Not guilty of the crime. And damage to the city of Los Angeles running into billions of dollars. So my mother and I, we was watching the George Floyd's trial, and it brought back so many memories of my son Oscar's case. Oscar's last picture in his cell phone was of the officer who shot him. My name is Wanda Johnson. I'm the mother of Oscar Grant. Grant was shot once in the back as he lay face down on the train station's platform. He was unarmed. The 27-year-old officer has said he thought he had drawn his taser gun, but accidentally pulled out his handgun instead. And the incident was captured on cell phone video. Video speaks for themselves, and the jury will see that and make the correct decision. We knew that we would have a very hard time winning in the court systems because the judicial system was not made for everyone in the society. As the situation went on, the crowd began to grow angry. Oh my goodness, the same playbook that they used for what happened with Oscar, they used the same thing for George Floyd. Oh, there was a crowd of angry mob people. There are people behind them. There are people across the street, people yelling. We don't know if they were gonna attack us. I thought about the young man testifying in George Floyd's case. You grew angrier and angrier. Calling the police on the police. Nine one one was the address of the emergency. How do you have somebody investigate those that they work with? Of course, you're going to find that they're going to believe the people that they work with quicker than they will believe the citizens who are fouling the complaint. Would you like to speak with the sergeant? Yeah, like he was one unresponsive. Second. He wasn't resisting arrest or any of it. Okay, one second. Murderers, bro. That nigga just murderers, bro. You know, when we was going to jury trial for Oscar, they would ask questions like, do you know anybody who went to jail? Do you know anybody who had an encounter with the police? And as soon as the person said that, they would strike them from being a juror, right? Having a jury that consists of different backgrounds, it could help with the decision making of innocence or guilty. The 27-year-old officer pleaded not guilty to the murder charge. His trial had been moved to Los Angeles over concerns of racial tension and intense media scrutiny. Father God, we come to you in your son named Jesus Christ. Father, we ask the people that see this. Every time I come to my mom's house, I'm reminded that my son was killed here. My name is Sequet Clark. I am the mother of Stefan Clark. 22-year-old Stefan Clark was fatally shot while running from police. Clark was seen evading authorities after allegedly smashing car window. He was shot eight times in his grandmother's backyard. Police apparently thinking he was holding a gun now say it was a cell phone. Out of fear for their own lives, they fired their service weapon. And following the incident, officers manually uh, muting their body cameras at times. As we watched the George Floyd trial, I invited particular members of my family because you can't address something in the community or the city or the nation until you address it at home with the family. 
when Mr. Floyd was in distress, Mr. Chauvin wouldn't help him, didn't help him. So that's just like how they left Pablo out there. Mm -hmm. Handcuffed him after he was dead. Excessive mm -hmm. force. Excessive force and lethal force after the fact of death. Right, right. I like felt he... saddened, heavy, drained. I felt as if I was a slave 400 years ago. Just hearing how he was done, seeing how he was done, and then to turn around and hear the defense's attempt to bring up the fact that we should not focus on the nine minutes and 29 seconds. That it took to kill George Floyd, but we should focus on what went on ahead of that. Anything that does not deal directly with the murder of George Floyd is irrelevant, in my opinion. He's six to six and a half feet tall. You, you did not know that he had taken heroin. Mr. Floyd did use a counterfeit $20 bill to purchase a pack of cigarettes. Mr. Floyd put drugs in his mouth. Papa is already Mr. dead. George Floyd's already dead. Mr. Floyd's That's right. That's right. So now you're resurrecting him yeah. just to kill him all over again. Mm -hmm. Basically. Defame him in order to justify the wrongdoing of your officers reminded me exactly of what the district attorney did to Stefan. The cell phone examination revealed a domestic violence incident that happened with the mother of his children, texts and phone calls showing that he was seeking drugs, and the photograph of his hand holding 10 Xanax pills. What was on his cell phone has zero to do with the actions of the police officers at the time of his homicide. I feel like it's a bittersweet thing that's happening watching the George Floyd trial because I'm optimistic that this is a piece of justice for the death of my son. We may not be here, but they go to get him. They go to get him. Was a crime committed? The answer to that question is no. And as a result, we will not charge these officers with any criminal liability related to the shooting death Support. Step on April 14, 1991, King fights emotional and physical scars. So this is basically a photo album book of my dad's uh, newspaper articles since he's been in the news years and years and years. You throw someone to the wolves and you expect them to be normal. You know, there's no such thing as normal after that. And then, can you imagine how many Rodney Kings there is that never got videotaped? There's plenty of them. I would have prayed and hoped that Oscar's trial would have been televised because America has to really look in the mirror and say, are all people being treated equally. We're not focused on the videotape, his toxicology, his heart condition. We're focused on the fact that several people witnessed this man get murdered. And you can see it with our own eye. It's crazy. People don't realize oh, what man. it does to your family. It's bigger than just a trial and, and this officer we never get to see them again. We never get to smell them again and kiss them again. Our lives are completely affected forever. 